So maybe the anarchy of production was really good at a certain time in historical development and certainly it allowed for an explosion of consumer goods. But at this point in history, when we're facing down global problems like climate change, which I'll get to in a second here, the anarchy of production actually starts to become an existential threat. And we have to overcome that um, in order to, to you know, avoid, I think, the, the fate that we're, we're staring down the barrel of right now if this anarchy of production is not you know, ended and we can, we can implement some sort of rational planning that does not care about how much profit you can generate in a competitive free marketplace, but rather cares about how can we organize production and distribution such that, such that the most um, amount of goods that people need are given to them and that people all over the world can have the highest quality of life possible. That incentive system of structuring your society to ensuring that everybody has their basic needs met and has the highest quality of life that we can possibly give them is antithetical to capitalist production. It can't happen, and whenever you talk about planning, capitalists hate it because what it means is that you have to get rid of the energy of production. You have to get rid of the 300,000 types of potato chips and instead use that productive capacity and that distributive capacity to ensure that human beings had, I don't know, health care and education and child care, for example. Yeah, definitely. And I think this leads into the next question well, too, because one thing that I think Engels gets at is that that anarchy holds capitalism back, right? Engels points out that this is why monopolies form or why capitalists try to make state intervention into markets is because it's really unstable and it creates a crisis over and over again for capitalism when you don't have centralized planning that's actually tooled towards making your society work in the first place. Uh, so the next question that I had is that Engels argues that state control over industry is not the same thing as socialism. And he says that state regulation and planning can actually be a way that capitalists attempt to quell the more turbulent effects of capitalism on prediction, while not actually dissolving those contradictions. So what I'm interested in is what implications this has for socialist strategy today as it relates to the capitalist state, capitalist state projects of regulations and interventing into the market. Yeah, I think one thing that this really calls to mind is the way that liberals and social democrats and increasingly these people are calling themselves socialists, how, how what they do is not fundamentally about transcending class society or transcending capitalism as such, um, but is rather about maintaining it through regulation, right? Um, the idea of social democrats and liberals, for example, is that the capitalist system is worth protecting, the political institutions that it vomits up are worth defending, and therefore we don't want to transcend capitalism, we actually want to make it work better. And that requires regulation, etc. FDR, right, the New Deal, this was after the Great Depression, and you know, FDR did a whole bunch of, you know, enlarged the size of government to make sure that the anarchy of capitalism production doesn't lead to such a horrific um, crises again. And what was he called by the leaders of industry and the mainstream media at that time? He was called a socialist, a Bolshevik, a communist, etc. But when they asked FDR at the end of his life, what was your greatest accomplishment? What did FDR say? He said, my greatest accomplishment was saving capital. So the social democrats, the liberals who like to put on this facade of being super progressive, and maybe they even might convince themselves that they really do want to transcend capitalism through these mechanisms. And certainly there is an importance to reforming and regulating the free market so that it doesn't hurt people as much as it can and as much as it often does, right? I'm not saying that all forms of regulation and reforms are meaningless and should just be dismissed, of course not. But you have to see what's actually going on and how the state, under in, in, in a capitalist context, actually serves to bolster it and perpetuate it, not overcome it, because it literally can't. The other thing that brought to mind was thinking about China, right? Um, now, China has no, um, I mean, I'm trying to phrase my words here, we'll edit this out here. Um, so one thing about China is that it's, it's a one-party rule, and there are benefits to that. <laughs> as much as we're taught to recoil at that term, the, the benefits of that is that it doesn't necessarily go through the horrific you know, ups and downs, booms and busts cycles on these tight cycles that we're dealing with here in the U.S. It doesn't happen as often in China. And moreover, they can actually plan long term in a way that, social, or in a way that capitalist democracies literally can't.